And would you please welcome the Honourable Bob Hawke and Graham Freudenberg up to the stage. They mounted the dais with a little more alacrity 40 years ago, but uh, I'm told you, you, you may take your podium chairs, but don't sit down for too long, Mr Hawke, because I'm about to invite you to speak. Uh, it says here you're down for seven minutes. I think chances of that are fairly slim. Um, but uh, your speech is entitled The Night, The Party, The People. Bob Hawke. Thank you, uh, Jonathan, Vice-Chancellor, members of the Whitlam family, members of uh, Goff's government, uh, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I was given the title of the, the night, the party and the people. Really, it's uh, impossible to find words uh, that can convey to you tonight, although you may have got some sense of it from the film, but it's almost impossible to convey the sense of what was almost a feverish excitement and anticipation. Uh, we were assembled here in a room which was, I believe, supposed to hold about uh, a thousand. There were a thousand and a half crammed into it and hundreds outside. Uh, it was uh, just seething with excitement. The crowd was made up of ordinary committed Labor Party members, trade unionists, but we were also joined by some illustrious uh, colleagues from the screen and the stage, the literary, the artistic and the sporting world. Without being exhaustive, we had author Tom Keneally, we had painter Clifton Hugh, we had uh, Bert Newton, Bobby Lim, Cole Joy, Little Patty, <laughs> and it's good to have uh, some of those here tonight. And uh, for those of you with any sporting memory, there was also Bill Lowry, uh, the uh, former Australian cricket captain from Victoria. So there was uh, the faithful and all these uh, people uh, from uh, leading parts of our, our culture and our sporting world come, coming here into this uh, hall to uh, share, as I say, that great sense of excitement. And when Goff came up to the microphone, all of us, and, and he came up on his well-lit stage, all of us had the feeling that we could see at last the light at the end of that long, dark tunnel of 23 years of devastatingly misguided and disastrous Tory rule. <laughs> the 23 years which had seen privilege propped up and the poor and the needy and the disadvantaged ignored the 23 years in which we'd seen over 500 fine Australian lives lost in that futile and misrepresented war in Vietnam for which the Conservatives have never apologised. All those dark days of deprivation, of misguided priorities, we sitting down there could see now this light at the end of the tunnel. Now, Gough uh, began what was, I think, unquestionably the greatest opening election speech in our federal history. Gough began that speech with borrowed coin. Men and women of Australia, and that rousing opening phrase was, of course, precisely the phrase that had been used nearly 30 years before, when John Curtin, that great Labor figure in 1943, opened the 1943 election campaign. But from those opening words, 
we were presented with a new and compelling currency of policies and ideas that were spelt out so compellingly and eloquently by Gough. So much so that in a very short time, this new currency had become the currency of the political marketplace in Australia. The currency, in so many ways, was new, but it was based on the old gold standard. And that gold standard, of course, was the traditional labour values that had lasted throughout the decades. Those basic labour values which established the gold standard for labour were the equality of opportunity, particularly, as Gough emphasised, in education. It was a concept and belief that it was always a foundational role for government in assisting the least fortunate in society. And there was the belief that it was the responsibility of government to insist in the development of our resources so that there could be the greatest possible stimulus and encouragement to economic growth and to employment. Those were the great solid labour values which constituted the gold standard for labour. Now it's not part of my brief tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to explain that currency in detail that Gough laid out, the currency, the new currency of the new policies and the new programs. But it's uh, rather uh, to uh, explain to you the, the feeling uh, of the night. But uh, you could, I think, gather from the opportunity of having watched that film, you can gather uh, just how brilliantly and eloquently and yet directly and plainly Gough spelled out the details of this new currency. But rather, I want, if I can, to convey to you uh, that we were at once, all of us here in this hall, we were at once transfixed, uh, we were excited, and overall, were eager to get going and do our part as soon as we could to help Gough deliver uh, the new and vibrant Australia which he had shown we were capable of becoming. There's three points uh, I'd like to make uh, in closing. The first, of course, is just a word about Gough. I had the opportunity of seeing Gough the other day on the case of his 96th birthday. Of course, as we know, he's not at the top of his, his powers, but that uh, spirit is still there and it's impossible, I think, to convey, and I hope all the members of the family understand this, I think it's impossible to convey the debt that we owe to Gough, uh, not just for that great speech uh, on uh, that great occasion, but for what he did to organise and discipline our party so that through his leadership we were able uh, to transform those great values of the gold standard of labour into actuality in our life. And I know that all of you would, would join with me in asking the members of the Whitlam family to convey to Gough, uh, our, our love and our gratitude for all that he did, not just on that note. <laughs> the second point I'd make uh, is the least important of the three, but I, I like to make it because, you know, Politics has changed in many ways, but one of the ways it's changed, which I regret so deeply, is that no more do we have those great public meetings like we had in 72. And why is that? It's because of bloody television. <laughs> you can have 
And what was, what was happening? We were having meetings with 1,000, 2,000 people there, 99.5% who were 1,000% behind you. But you'd have a group of people come in dis determined to disrupt, and the television would concentrate on them. So all you got from the public meetings was this negative sort of projection. And in the end, both sides of politics found that these public meetings were counterproductive. I think this is one of the great losses of uh, public political life in this country. But the final point I would like to, to make is this, my friends. I think the, the lesson that we've got to learn uh, from this experience of 72, before and after, is the continuing challenge of adapting the application of our gold standard of values to changing circumstances. And of course, not just that challenge of adapting uh, our gold standard of values to those changing circumstances, but over time, adding to those values which make up our gold standard. And remember how we've done this over the recent decades. I point to two additions to those basic values that have, uh, have driven us in the past. The first, of course, is on the in relation to discrimination. We, we'd had the white Australia policy. But in that period from 43 onwards and under Gough and then myself and others, we now have as a fundamental value of Labor the absolute opposition to any form of discrimination based on sex, race or creed. And of course the other area in which we've created a new... <laughs> a new value, of course, is in regard to our embrace of the environment. We are no longer a party which thinks simply of growth for growth's sake, but we know that we have a responsibility to this generation and future generations to talk about sustainable growth. So let me conclude... <laughs> let me conclude, my dear friends, by saying that we should, I believe, and can best honour Gough, 1972, and uh, that great occasion 40 years ago today. We can best honour Gough, in my judgment, uh, by rekindling uh, the in, in our hearts the enthusiasm of that night 43 years ago, and by recommitting ourselves unreservedly to those basic and great values of Labor's gold standard. Thank you very much.